Welcome to today's session on monitoring reports. We call that our 10 rules of effective report writing. I am Gary Freeman, and I have 30 years' experience in the clinical industry, both in drugs and devices, having worked in pharmaceutical companies, device companies, and CROs. I'm currently operating a niche provider company, and I provide monitoring and auditing services to the industry. In this regard, I have the opportunity to write reports and more often review monitoring reports from our team members. Also, when I'm auditing at sites, we get the trial master file from the sponsors, which means that we have all of the monitoring visit reports to review as well. This has become, or always has been, a major issue for regulatory agencies. Keep in mind, all of your monitoring visit reports are auditable. We need to remember that these are auditable, and our writing style, therefore, is very important. The regulatory agency gets a flavor of our monitoring and due diligence from their understanding of what we have documented. Remember also that the mission of the FDA is to protect the subjects, to look out for their welfare and their rights. We need to include this, particularly issues around informed consent forms, in our monitoring visit report, therefore. Let's look at our learning objectives for today. The first thing we're going to do is to examine the impact of poor report writing. Poor report writing it has a big impact if it's not done correctly. We're also going to learn to apply the definitions and concepts of scientific report writing. This is an important area that some sponsors take very, very literally, others do not. It's how to write a scientific report. The third piece is to implement the 10 rules of quality report writing for CRAs. These keep evolving as the regulatory focus changes. These are an important aspect of things we want to consider when we are writing our monitor visit reports. Each reviewer will have his or her own flavor as well to how they would like things to be documented. Each sponsor in their SOP may give some guidance on answering the questions that are in their own templates in the monitoring visit reports. So we'll look basically at those 10 rules as they relate to the CRA activity. We want to make sure that in our monitoring visit report, we include everything we did on the visit and anything that we did not do with a plan of when we will be doing those events. That's extremely important for a regulatory agency to see what it was that we actually accomplished while we were there. And even more importantly, how are we managing the site? What is it we didn't get to do, but we know we will be doing? How are we managing them? As you all know, much of our monitoring today is done without being at the site. We have so many centralized systems that we can take a look at what's going on at the site without being there in many cases. So we need to figure out how to document that so the regulatory agency will realize that we are in control. We are overseeing our site. We're managing that site for compliance. So the activities that we do or don't do are extremely important to be documented. We're going to learn to write action items, how to handle those deviations, and maybe how to write a better query to get the results that we're looking for. We're going to integrate our essential document mapping within the monitoring report as well. How do we account for all of those documents? One of particular interest is the training log. We're going to learn to appreciate the challenges of CRA report writing and the report review. So let's look at the impact that your report does have on other people. First of all, we need to think about who are we writing for? Who are we writing for? Give us a chat about that. Who do you write your report for? Who is your audience? Who would read your report? Just get a couple of you to respond on the chat panel to all participants. Who is it you're writing your report for? Managers, sponsors, okay, managers. Investigators, that's, oh, okay, because you're, yeah, 
the academic zero might be writing it for the investigator. Might be doing investigator initiated studies where the investigator is the sponsor as well as the investigator, particularly in an, in an academic setting. Absolutely. Okay. None of you happen to have written that you're writing your report for a regulatory authority. If there is an inspection of your study at your site, you have written that monitoring visit report for an auditor or for an inspector. Your company would likely have a quality assurance group. You're, most of you are fairly good sized companies. So you're going to have a quality assurance group. Some of you then might have your quality assurance auditors going to your sites or auditing your trial master file that would contain your monitoring visit report. Therefore, the auditor would be reading your report. 